I think like we have a majority of you all on board already. So let's just start. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum members of IFMC Pakistan. This is Abra Zahid, Nora IFMC Pakistan currently, also serving as Kura Development Assistant of Member Engagement. In my capacity here, I'm hosting this particular webinar with my national team members, Myra and Khatija, as Nora. And uh, this particular webinar, this is the first webinar of SCORA and uh, for this particular term. And the purpose of this webinar, we're going to go with, I'm going to tell you something about what is the purpose of this particular webinar. And then uh, uh, my team members can just like take over. So um, uh, in our term, like when our term started in August last year, so we kind of started working with our national activity that was on access to safe abortion. Uh, as most of you might know, making her story. And uh, that was like our first initiative that we took as a team. And that was on access to safe abortion. That was a work that was happening for the first time on the national platform in form of a national activity. So with passage of time, when we like kept building on our work, that what particular things do we need to keep in our mind for this particular term, we kind of uh, decided that our motto this year is going to be one notch higher. By that we mean that uh, we are going to take new initiatives in this term uh, for like something that has not been done in the previous terms and something that we can give as a proper handover to the upcoming terms, just leaving as a legacy. So we wanted all the Lauras to know, we wanted all the SCORA Angels of IFMS of Pakistan to know that we in our capacity as SCORA national team uh, can do and give like all the examples for you guys, something that they have to do on local level. We can set examples for them on national level as well. So uh, there were lots of things that we came up with and there were two newest of initiatives. This is something that I had envisioned when even I was presenting my candidature as Nora IFMSA Pakistan in February 2019. So I kind of shared the ideas with my team and everyone agreed uh, on like having all of us on board for this particular thing. And uh, that's just the history we are sitting here in front of you, talking in front of you, talking about our initiatives in front of you and we are really proud about that. So the first initiative is SCORA exchange and the second initiative is SCORA policy, a national policy on access to safe abortion. So uh, we started our work as a team in December last year. Uh, we created our groups, our subgroups in our own team. Like I had 13 to 14 people on board in my team as national team. I divided them into two halves so that both can equally work for both sides of the work for policy and for exchange. So no one is overburdened while well, I was handling both of them simultaneously. After that, uh, the first few months, they were totally uh, in like working of SCORA policy because that was something that we had to do in that particular tenure. And uh, we're going to build on that on where is the work lying and standing at the moment and how we're going to build up on that in future as well. For SCORA exchange, this is something um, that we had to start after March meeting, like we did, and we have shared the calls with you. You might have been seeing all the, the posts that have been coming up in groups. Uh, I try my level best to um, share that at every platform that comes in my way, maybe WhatsApp, Facebook, everywhere, so that everyone can get to know about it. Apart from that, I've been sending personal emails to all the trainers and the presidents as well. So uh, I'm really hoping that you have been through it and you really know uh, about uh, these initiatives. So uh, I think we can just like take the start on like actually talking about it. And if uh, any one of you have any question, I, I'll be looking in the chat and I can answer you over there as well. Or maybe in the end, we can have the question answer sessions as well. So if anyone has to leave or maybe anyone has to stay for the question answering, it's like more on them. But yeah, we are recording this webinar as well and this is going to be on YouTube too. So it's nothing to worry about. So let's just start. Uh, Khadija, over to you. Thank you so much, Abra. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Khadija Imtanan. I'm a member of the SCORA national team and together with Abra, I'm also a coordinator for the exchange. So before I start off with like explaining the whole thing to you, I'd like to mention all the people who have worked on this exchange and who have actually made this dream be something that we can look at. Um, first of all, the amazing members of the SCORA national team, um, all of them, including Abra, Myra, Fatma, Kulsum, Hiba, Hassan, Maida, Aisha, 
all of them have been lovely team members and i'd also like to mention the core committee which has been working on this who like spent so much time and effort on this including um our amazing president the vpcb and neo so thank you guys um i can no i don't think that me and abra or anybody could have done this individually it has been a collective effort and thank you all so much so uh moving on i'd like to start off with explaining the objectives of the scora exchange why did we decide to do it uh maira could you move on to the next slide thank you okay so basically why we're we're conducting it in the first place is that we want to increase awareness and understanding in the international community about srhr in pakistan so srhr basically means the sexual and reproductive health and rights what we want and what we are trying to achieve is that the international community learns about our challenges and our efforts that we've made to combat all the problems that Pakistan is currently facing in the field of SRHR furthermore we've also tried to inculcate a sense of global unity in the incoming students we think that by having this exchange we will be able to have meaningful discussions with them and we'll be able to have meaningful input from them that how can we move forward how can we uh, bring change furthermore i think that uh, one of the most important things or one of the most important objectives of conducting this exchange is that it will make ifmsa pakistan officially scora active and we will be known to be conducting scora exchanges in the near future as well inshallah and personally i think one of the best um, objectives of a scora exchange is having the ability to change people's perception of pakistan making people realize that we are more than what they see in the media that we are a peace loving country progressing to an incredible future so now that we've gone over why do we need to conduct one we're going to move on to what is a scora exchange so a scora exchange is a unilateral exchange program and what i mean by unilateral is that people from other countries from other ifmsa member countries will be coming to pakistan but nobody will be going abroad right so it's just going to be like people coming and nobody going out um these students uh, they're going to be around 8 to 10 that's what we've decided but um there can always be a little more or a little less and what they're going to be doing here in pakistan is that they're going to spend 3 weeks uh with 52 working hours now these 52 working hours could include uh trainings sessions ngo visits clerkship and many other square oriented activities um furthermore you kind of like if you do the maths like 3 weeks if you do working hours bahut sare ghante beech mein bach jate hain so all that time that we like kind of like left with that's going to be spent um roaming around pakistan and what the square national team has decided is that we'll be spending time in three cities which is Lahore, Islamabad, and Swat. Uh, Maria, could you move on to the next slide? So, now, now that you know what a Scora exchange is, we're going to be going through that. How is it going to work? Basically, how are we like? How does the national team and the core committee envision this whole project moving forward? If I were to put a basic timeline in front of you, um, I would say that it has three phases. Now the phase 1 is the one that we're currently in which is designing the proposal and this designing the proposal will last from May 2020 to June 2020 and after that we're going to have a second phase which is the intermediate phase which is going to be from August 2020 to January 2021 and the last our favorite is phase 3 which is the field work which is going to be in February 2021 Now I'm going to go over into a little bit more detail um regarding all the phases so bear with me. Okay so first of all in the first phase what we've decided is that we're going to create a proposal. Well like the title says we're going to create a proposal and this proposal is going to um basically have information regarding everything budget finances um accommodation designing of the sessions and all of this. Now when the score national team kind of like stood together and was like okay la let's like create a proposal we kind of realized we can't do it alone 
and that is why we decided to um, open calls for OC pres uh, for LC presidents and trainers. Uh, I'm going to be talking about what exactly we want from the LC presidents and trainers in kind of like in the next slides. Uh, but moving forward, like we're going to be working with the LC presidents and the trainers to create the proposal. This proposal has to be given to the SCORA IT by the end of June, right? And if we give it by the end of June, uh, we're basically giving it to kind of like kind of like an approval or a disapproval type of state. And the intermediate phase is only possible if our proposal gets accepted. So inshallah, inshallah, hoping that it does get accepted. What we're going to be doing in the second phase is that we will be creating training manuals. Um, we're going to be capacity building the trainers so that they so that to ensure high quality sessions because we do want them to um, deliver the best sessions that they can. And also we'll be opening calls for general members of IFMSA, which will be like regarding the organizing committee, like logistics team, registration team, visa team, and all that. So the calls for that that will open around in the second phase, which is the intermediate phase. And the last one, the field work, the best part, the score exchange, inshallah, 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 it's going to be in uh, February, 2021. Uh, Mara, next slide. Okay, so one of the basic questions that we've had is that um, this exchange is going to be over two terms. It's going to include um, basically 2020 as well as 2021. Um, the thing with he the thing with this is that the SCORA national team and all the committee and everything that we've done so far, um, it's been an independent work. Like it is associated with the SCORA, like um, the SCORA national team and the NORA. But at the same time, it has certain independent um, capabilities as a result of which it is completely okay and it's going to be completely smooth running over two terms. Uh, next slide, please. So right now, um, if we go back to the timeline, we are at phase one and we are at the point in time where we've opened the calls for trainers and residents. Uh, next slide. So what exactly do we need from our LC presidents? We need our LC presidents to um, basically kind of um, help us out by um, providing us session rooms where we can conduct the exchange itself. Um, it doesn't have to be like the whole three weeks. It can be any, um, uh, you can say a couple of hours or a couple of days or maybe like some part of the week. Um, and also, I'd like to mention here that since the exchange is going to be spread over three cities, which is Lahore, Sawat, and Islamabad, we're going to be spending 12 days in Lahore, um, five days in Islamabad, and three days in Swat. So according to that, we're going to be fixing um, the number of hours in the different cities. And we need our LC presidents, if it's possible for them, to provide us accommodation, uh, which can be through um, the LC um, or the the respective colleges, hostels. And also if they can help us in getting an NGO or an external collaboration or sponsors on board, that would be extremely helpful um, because we are in need of that. And also um, where we, um, if the LC or if the president or if any SCORA national activity or any SCORA local activity is being conducted in that um, LC at that period of time, then it would also be very helpful for us if the president would allow the SCORA national um, exchange students, SCORA national exchange students to go with them. Also, like I'd like to add that any more ideas are welcome. We are in the proposal um, designing phase and this is the first time we're conducting an exchange. So if any of the presidents or any of the trainers or any of the local general IFMSA members have any um, um, suggestion on how to make this better, then we are completely open to that as well. Uh, next slide. So we also need help from our trainers. Now we've mentioned this in our post as well, online as well, um, is that we need our trainers to design sessions with SCORA people. What we're going to be doing is that we're going to be forming teams of four for each focus area. And what we've decided is that um, since SCORA comprises of five focus areas for this exchange, we've decided to have three major focus areas 
and two minor ones. So the major ones are going to be including uh, maternal health and access to safe abortion, gender-based violence, HIV and STIs, and the two minor focus areas will be SOGI and comprehensive sexuality education. So what we're going to be doing is that each of, this, each of these focus areas, they're going to have four people um, designing the sessions for them. So out of those four people, um, two of them are going to be SCORA national team members and two of them, oh wait, SCORA national team members and HIBA. <laughs> and the other two um, are going to be um, the trainers, which we're going to select and which is why we have um, opened the call for OC um, uh, trainers and LC presidents. So basically, after the selection of teams, after we've decided who's going to work with who, um, we're going to be training um, the trainers and the SCORA national teams with regard to their particular focus area. And we're going to be ensuring that um, they are completely on the same page, that they know what's going on and what we expect from them. The session designs will again be included in the proposal and then the trainers will conduct the sessions in the cities of their choice. Um, there could be a little um, like because like we have to make sure okay, like every city is like catered for but generally we will try that the trainers will conduct the sessions in the cities of their choice also i'd like to mention free food accommodation certification is going to be provided uh, next slide so that's it um please do apply for the score exchanges we've been working very hard on it um and we appreciate all your um uh, motivation, your enthusiasm, and your um, efforts to help us making this am am amazing, amazing, amazing exchange. Thank you. That's all from my side. Perfect. Thank you so much, Khatija. Uh, so uh, I'm expecting that you guys have understood more or less about what was the purpose of having our first call in which we opened it for the presidents and for um, the trainers. Uh, we will build more on this once we are done with explaining the policy part of our work. And I think this is going to be a, a, an open uh, question answering session in which we can cater to all your queries. So over to you, Myra, for score our policy, national policy on access to safe abortion. Um, hi, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm Myra, and I was in the team that was responsible for uh, the initiative score policy. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention everyone who's been working on this. We've been working on this for quite some time and it's been like a lot of late nights and OLMs and a lot of research into this. So everyone from the SCORA national team, uh, Abira, Umar, Ushna, Uzair, Zahra, Khadija, Abra, of course. And also we had some people uh, from outside the SCORA team, uh, the VPCB, Farhad, Amish, and Heba and Navira. So thank you everyone for making this uh, policy possible. Uh, I want to start by, I think most of you might not have like, uh, like I'll start from the international part, like why the policies are there and what is policy technically. Since IFMSA is like on international level, like such a huge organization with so many different uh, medical students, all of them with their own opinions and stuff. we. Uh, they want, the IT wanted to find an official way to express the official opinion, our stance on various uh, topics on, under various standing committees. So that, that's what an IFMSA policy is basically about. How It's not like at the end of advocacy, but it's a tool you use to say what your stance is on specific topics. So for SCORA, it's very useful that we tell our members that we tell our partners we tell our collaborations that what we believe in okay so usually it's used in the external meetings so as you might as you might be aware there are external meetings that ifmsa members uh, their representatives go on i'm talking about international meetings right now so if you go in the wha or any other international meeting there is you have to have some documents that portray the opinions of the whole federation as a whole, right? So it's obviously not possible that you ask every individual what their opinion is or what their stance is. So what happens is the policy document is made and how it's made is a very transparent process where everyone can give their input and it gets voted upon in the GAs by the different animals. So when you go to an external meeting, when you're representing IFMSA, 
you have the confidence that this policy document, the stances in it are representing every single member in the Federation. So what our job as part of the Federation is to be involved in that process and to give input to the documents. How you can do that is there, the process in the international IFMSA for making policies is that they open calls for the people who would be working on a specific policy. For example, I'll give you an example. The last year that we had in Rwanda in the March meeting, we had four policies made in this forum, right? One of them, for example, was obstetric violence and humanized birth. So what they do is they open a call on people who would like to work on that, someone who's passionate about this, someone who has a lot of knowledge about it. Even if you don't have knowledge, you can research before applying, right? So those people, that small working group is responsible for making the policy. They make the policy that policy gets sent uh, for input from various NMO, uh, from the, all of the NMOs in the world. They can give their inputs. I, uh, when that uh, policy document is given for input, anyone can go to the draft and give their suggestions. And all of the suggestions are noted by the small working group, the people who originally made the document, and they make amendments, appropriate amendments. Again, Anyone can go and give their opinions. I'm talking about international policy papers too here, okay? So how the policy document is uh, structured is there are two parts. There's a policy statement and there's a position paper. The policy statement is basically just like a concise document. It's two pages. There's specific bylaws you have to follow, but it's very concise. It's just an introduction of what it is, for example, if it was obstetric violence and humanized birth, the introduction would be like why we're why a pol we think a policy was necessary on this, what the stats are around the world, etc. And a call to action. A call to action is what we want our members, um, medical students around the world, partners, governments, what we want them to do to solve this issue. Okay, so policy statement is very concise. Then the position paper is basically a discussion of how we came to the conclusion, how like, you know, like a really detailed document on why we gave our points in the policy statement. Okay, so you've got the policy paper made by the small working group, you opened it for input from uh, input from all of the animals, then a policy commission is made. International level, you have to have two animals present that policy. Okay, and uh, one IT member, international team member. So that's three people. They'll be responsible for going over the policy and making sure that it's evidence-based, that you know there's no error in it, uh, basically coordinating everything. And then finally, during the GA, during the General Assembly, in the plenaries, there is a discussion on the plenary. Again, even then you can give your input on that. It's discussed again, and then it's voted upon. So like, as you can tell, this whole process is transparent. Everyone can give an input. You um, have to have like very thorough research done. So there's no like, you know, error in it, et cetera. And then finally it gets voted upon. And then again, a policy document, like if it's made, it's just not there forever. It expires after, after every three years. So you have to go back, revisit it, and then make sure that all of the stats mentioned are like updated. Obviously the stats like now wouldn't be the same as three years ago or any stance on it wouldn't be the same three years ago. Or maybe now there's a specific topic that you know we could work on. For example, uh, for now the coronavirus or COVID-19 would be very relevant. Maybe someone can make a policy paper on that. So this is uh, two examples of the SCORA policies that were made. Uh, for the uh, that were presented in the March meeting and were accepted, were adopted. Okay. As again, how you would be involved is you can apply for the small working groups that um, make the policies or they update the policies. For example, I was uh, I was I was responsible for the small uh, uh, I was responsible for making obstetric violence. I was in the small working group that made it. Nora Apra was heading the small working group that was responsible for the policy paper on ensuring safe access to abortion, the international policy. You can give your inputs on the drafts when they open up. These calls, they open up before uh, three, I think uh, three months before every GA. So you can go put your input when it's open. You can attend the plenary sessions where discussed. You can vote upon it. And then you can also use the policy documents in your advocacy on a national level. 
Now, what national policy documents are? The policies that I mentioned, all of them, they were the international policies, what the IFMS as a whole makes, right? So why would you need national policy documents and how are they different, right? So national policy documents, you know, um, every NMO, every region, they have different priorities, different, you know, like different set of laws, different set of circumstances, different cultures, everything. So quite a few times, the circumstances are very different in our NMO compared to the other NMOs, right? So for example, in Pakistan, maybe you think that there's something that we need to work on that isn't there in the policy papers, or you think that maybe the members would, you know, um, use something in their activities. So that's where national policy documents come in. <clears throat> Technically, you can make a national policy document by yourself. I'll tell you the work process later on. The four ways that you would use national policy documents are for advocacy. For example, if we want to work with specific NGOs on a topic, having a policy document helps a lot because you can confidently give that policy document and you can say, yes, this is the stance of the whole IFMSA, of uh, IFMSA Pakistan, right? Inter guide for the internal work. Maybe some things aren't elaborated in the bylaws that you want to change, right? So a policy would technically be a guide for the internal work that there's a specific thing, for example, sustainability. You want to ensure that your NMO is environmentally sustainable. So you make a national policy on that, specifying how NMO, uh, how the different LCs should work. That would be a policy. NMO's activities. Um, for example, you're working on a topic that you're not sure what the stance of the federation would be or your specific NMO would be. So a policy, again, would help to for you to guide your work in that activity so you can know which position you can and can't take on behalf of your NMO. And finally, external partners. If you are looking to collaborate with external partners, I think uh, they want to know what your beliefs are. They want to know what your mission statement is. Like they want to know what you believe in and what you want to work on. So that's again, a place where policy documents come useful that they help to tell you what your belief and what your stance is on a specific thing. Why uh, policy documents are so useful in SCORA is SCORA has a lot of topics that we fight against. Like there are a lot of taboos, right? So it's really um, useful to have a policy, like put the, giving you point blank, like what you should believe in, like what our stance is and what the evidence is in regarding that fact, okay? So what we've been working on till now like on the national policy that we've made on ensuring uh, access to safe abortion is, we made a group, uh, as I mentioned, the members, right? Uh, we made a group of people who would work on it. So we started with choosing the members who wanted to work on it, right? So we made a small group that would work on it, right? Then we researched the topic. There was a lot of research. We spent many weeks just researching a, on the uh, abortion laws and everything related to access to safe abortion and in the international platform, as well as in Pakistan, what the stats are in Pakistan, uh, what are the laws in Pakistan, what's the actual situation on the groundwork. So you have to do research very, very carefully because it sources everything. It will, like, you are opening it for amendment later on. Anyone, if you find an error, it can technically not be adopted. So this is why we've been working on, on it for so long that no one can say that, you know, this part, it's wrong here, or this part wasn't researched properly. So that's why research is very, very important. You prepare the document according to the structure that I mentioned earlier, uh, policy statement and position paper. You follow that. You, uh, okay, now on a national level, what you do is the policy commission would consist of two LC members. So two LCs would present that in the NGA. We will open this uh, national policy. So what stage are we in right now, right? We are done with making the policy paper. It's like in the final editing parts. So we're going to be opening the policy document for input from everyone, especially the LC presidents, on 29th April. So please like, uh, uh, like uh, look out for that and give your input. Go to the draft, give your input, give suggestions, go through the policy, why we made it and like why we think this topic should be a uh, priority in Pakistan. Okay, and then after your inputs, we're going to make amendments according to the inputs. Two LC members will be responsible for presenting it to the NGA and then it will be presented in the NGA and it will get voted upon by the different
analysis. Okay. So we decided after um, we decided after a long time that the topic that we would make a policy paper on was the access to safe abortion, like ensuring that there is access to safe abortion. Why we think that advocacy uh, should be our priority for this topic in Pakistan. Pakistan is like a country with the highest rate of abortions in Asia. Like the stats you see again and again, like confirm this, that there are a lot of clandestine abortions happening in Pakistan, even though it is technically legally restricted and the laws are very vague on what is allowed, when it is allowed and when it's not allowed. There are many women, there, it is a huge contribution to the maternal mortality and morbidity every year. Every year, thousands, hundreds of thousands of women come to the hospitals, to healthcare facilities with complications from unsafe abortions. So through this policy, I from say Pakistan's Quora, basically we recognize the importance of this. And then this is sort of a wake up call that, yes, we should be working on this. It's something you can't ignore, okay? So I would suggest that uh, when the policy paper gets opened up for input from them, do go through this with an open mind and like uh, mention, uh, like see like why we think that this is important. Um, yeah, so fighting taboos is what we do best. Uh, like, there, I don't think anyone in Scora ever like shies away from that. So again, 29th April is when we're opening it for input. So please give your suggestions. If you guys have any questions, you can ask in the chat now. Perfect. Thank you so much, Myra and Khatija. So, guys, this was our presentation in regards to SCORA exchanges and policy. I'll just build uh, a bit more on both of them. I'll just like take five minutes for that, and you guys are open to like question. Um, we started our initiative for SCORA policy first, as in like the first first thing that we did in this particular term after our national activity, and uh, there were people uh, who were on board already. Uh, from like not just from the national team but just as in like from activists in Pakistan. Uh, we already had Navira who is currently serving as president of Ephraim ULC and Heba. Uh, she's part of SCOF national team and uh, she's a PhD trainer and a TNT trainer as well. So like we already had two people along with that it was me and Myra uh, who started working for this initially. Then we shared this idea with our national team and then we divided our team, like half of them came for this particular work. And you guys already know the name, Myra has just mentioned that. So this was a long, long process and it took a lot of time. It took at least four months for us to prepare the whole document. We currently are in the final stages of it. Uh, we just started by just doing the research of the authentic resources that can be incorporated into FMSA Pakistan national policy. Just to mention over here, this is the first time SCORA FMSA Pakistan is presenting a national policy on any topic, not just access to safe abortion, but any topic. So this has never happened before. Um, after that, once our resources were done and it were collected, uh, we started working on drafting the whole policy. Uh, so it took us, uh, I think, two months uh, even we were working on this when we came back from March meeting Rwanda, even still like we were in process of completing the whole document. And uh, after that part was done, I think uh, the final thing is to just like, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, like after coming back from our meeting, Rwanda, we were just in the final process of completing that uh, policy document. And now this is like the final stage of it going where uh, we are going to do the final input of it. Like just like uh, Myra and I will have like a proofreading of everything in that document just to make sure that there is no plagiarism, just to make sure that there is no copy pasting, just to make sure that the uh, sentences are properly formed. And once it is prepared in a full final form, it is going to be sent to uh, the LC presidents and to the members of Academy of Pakistan for input. So just mentioning it over here that all of you are more than welcome to give your input. You can go through that. You can tell us if there's anything you want us to amend in that before we present it in NGA, because we really like want all the presidents and all the members of Academy of Pakistan on board for that. So your suggestions will be more than welcomed for that. Apart from that, 
the second work that we presented to you and we started in like these particular days i think 10 15 days before the main call started was the score exchange actually uh, we did start for working for that particular initiative even in december but that was a bit slow again because of the fact that we were trying to manage both the initiatives side by side but uh, obviously it wasn't possible because of uh, our prof and then march meeting as well but uh, the work it kind of speeded up in these days so score exchange is like the first time ever again this is an initiative that has never been taken by score national team ever before this has been done in our term and uh, it is a bit different from scopy score exchanges because we do not have to sign a contract or anything it's just that if we want to do it we select the coordinators we make a team and we start like working on the whole process of it and what does and how does the process go just to like summarize what Khatija said was that we have an OC an organizing committee it's I like for you guys to understand it nicely I just related to the SRT example like how we had our SRT sub-regional training for that the calls were opened first and then everything like just aligned with it and the event happened just like that we have opened the call for our first OC and that is the trainer's part and then the president's part. Collectively, having them on board, we'll start making our proposal. That is to be done by the end of June. Once that is done, we will be working on the capacity building of our own people to give them all those like soft skills by like how to advocate on SCORA topics because this is not something that everyone is very uh, pro in, right? So we will have our BPCB on board. We will have our president on board. Uh, Khadija and I will coordinating it. We will be on board. And uh, we'll have our SCORA trainers on board. And we'll try to like capacitate people in our best capacities to present the sessions nicely and properly in front of all the uh, participants that come in IFMSA Pakistan for that. Again, one thing that she mentioned, and I'm going to reiterate, and that is that purpose of having this particular thing is to change mindset of people about how FMC Pakistan and generally how I, how Pakistan is. So uh, for like two years now, um, it was considered that uh, FMC Pakistan is not an NMO that is quite active in SCORA, but we have, alhamdulillah, in this particular term, completely changed the perception of everyone in IT because I'm connected directly to the IT, so I know this as well. And I'm saying that very confidently, proudly and humbly, alhamdulillah that we have changed their perception of uh, involving people in SCORA in IFMSA Pakistan. So uh, this is like uh, our one way again, the SCORA exchange to like just involve people with us for like from all over the world to like let them know that it's not like that. We are quite active in SCORA and we are open up to like advocacies in SCORA. So the next timeline would be that we will have uh, the calls for like social media team, apart from that uh, visa team, logistics stuff. And it will be hosted in three cities, Lahore, uh, Islamabad and Sabah. And then in February, if like everything goes as we planned, inshallah, and our proposal gets selected, we will host these exchanges in IFMSA Pakistan for the first time ever. And one question that usually people have and is not like quite... Uh, facilitated that is like I'm going to tell her now but I've sent you like the answer for that in the emails as well and that is that our term ends in August 2020 and I'm not going to be the nor in the next term so like when the next person will come and when the next team will come how is the whole process go gonna go for that so uh, my answer to you like for this will be that SCORA exchange is a completely independent process of changing of terms even if like the new Nora comes and the new like Laura's come and then the new term starts, even then the OC that is still on board, the people who are going to be on board for working for this are going to be there working with us for the next term as well. And uh, um, so like nothing hinders that because uh, this is something that is independent of working off the cabinet. So yeah, that's that about uh, uh, our initiatives and like, just summarizing it a bit of how it is going and in what particular process and timeline it is. Uh, you guys are open to like ask any question. Like uh, I can bring him to your question and I'll answer that. Apart from that, if anyone else has any question, you are free to open your mic and just like um, ask away. 
um okay so uh, ibrahim uh, for that uh, i guess like uh, i have tried to complete and like uh, summarize everything that myra and khadija did uh, from the beginning in just like 5 minutes but uh, definitely we will uh, like upload this whole webinar on youtube and we have recorded it so like you can go through them apart from that if you want i can share the slides with you via email as well so inshallah that's not going to be a problem So guys, like uh, I see lots of trainers and I see lots of uh, presidents in the call. Uh, do you guys have any question? Is there anything that is still unclear? Something that we need to emphasize on more? We are more than here to like uh, facilitate you with that. Otherwise, Myra and Khadija, if you have any uh, thing to like uh, add in the end for concluding the webinar. then you are like free to go as well okay so i see a question when are we supposed to apply for the post of trainer okay so um the calls uh, like uh, who is this uh, i just saw okay uh, anas um i i hope i'm pronouncing your name rightly uh, the calls have been open for i think a past one week now and i've been trying to share it at every platform be it the trainers group of like whatsapp group be it the emails i've got your emails from the trainers data database from epcb and i've been trying to share it in every facebook group and every lc group and i've been pakistan page as well and scora facebook page as well so um uh, today tonight is like the deadline to apply uh, for this call 26 uh, 11:59 pm but i think like uh, you still have time if you want to apply apart from that if there is like any reason you did not like get to like go through the calls before maybe you can just like contact me directly and i can give you access to like fill the form apart from that uh, after today like the call will be like just taken down so yeah okay okay so questioning to your uh, like answering to your question here uh policy uh, uh, is a stance policy is our stance about a particular topic so this is not something that we uh, start implicating as a general idea but like if as a federation we have a stance on a particular thing we present it in a form of a policy in that particular on that particular platform i'll give you an example so when we were working on um, the national activity on access to safe abortion in august and september last year most of our national team members they had like lots of problems with like debating about the topic and about how are we going to like what exactly are we proposing in this particular mission like are we actually asking people to go for abortion or what so like we needed a document that clears our stance on what exactly are we proposing we are putting our stance forward on the basis of proper and authentic resources on the basis of proper and authentic research so um, apart from that like there is this one thing in the policy document that you say call to action and in that we do mention which particular like individual or which particular group of people are we trying to like focus on or maybe contact for that particular initiative so um, as like members of high femis of pakistan like we have the uh, if like that policy gets adopted suppose if we have a national policy and if it gets adopted inshallah whenever nga happens so we have like an official thing that we can use not just for like having our stance clear about what exactly do we mean when we say access to safe abortions but to like approach the higher authorities and the external partners as well even the ministry if somehow in some time we like manage to do that to like have them on board to like discuss about all these things because the laws laws are super vague about uh, um, access to safe abortion in pakistan so yeah that's how it works up right i'd like to add something sure please go on um here i think uh, you asked right so i'm going to give you an example uh one of the basic objectives of ifmsa is to raise the opinions to make our opinions heard that medical students have a say in issues of global health right so a major uh, a major focus of what we do is based on that that our opinion gets counted in the major meetings that happen around the world like in who in un in various other like high level meetings so that is where policies come in technically 
So you've got a global health issue. Uh, I'm talking about international policy here, right? Not national at the moment, okay? So you've got an issue and then we've made a policy uh, getting input from all of the medical students in the federation right so that policy is used to make the um, like the policy statements right the statements that our IFMS representatives give on uh, meetings like the WHA that comes with WHO and the UN meeting and everything so it's basically our opinion and that opinion gets like um, incorporated in making the policies around the world on global health. So that is what a policy document is for, one of the ways that it's used. And uh, I think uh, someone asked that if it's it will be adopted in the NGA, will it be presented in the international year? Okay, the specific policy that we worked on is a national policy. That's only for IFMS in Pakistan. It does not get presented in the international GA. Um, if an NMO is interested in making an international policy, what they do is they partner up with another NMO because you need two NMOs to present an international policy. They work on it together and then they go through all of the work process that I gave you for the international policy. That can be presented in the international GA and get adopted. Okay? I hope that's clear. Okay? Abra? Okay, thank you so much for adding to the question, Maida. Um, I see in Paul's question, and that is how and where could we share the suggestions, if any, on policy after going through it on 29th. So in Paul, the thing is that um, currently I am in contact with the presidents via email and in the WhatsApp group as well. Uh, I keep bugging them honestly all the time with lots of messages. So uh, what I'm going to do is once the document is done from our side, inshallah, on 29th, I'm going to send an email of that document to all the presidents of IFMS of Pakistan be it the coordinator LC, be it the, uh, the permanent LC, be it the temporary LC, so um, be it the candidate LC. So I'm going to send that email and it is going to have that document of the policy on access to safe abortion, the national policy on access to safe abortion. So uh, I'm going to mention that, that the presidents have to share that in their LC groups with all of you. Like I'm sure every LC has their own WhatsApp or maybe any other platform where they have an LC group where they keep it, like active contact with the EB and then the uh, local offices, right? So um, for that particular purpose, you will get to have that um, uh, document access as well. Apart from that, uh, we are going to like, if, if you're following our Facebook post, which I know you do, um, you must be seeing that Scora Facebook group. Uh, we share each and everything via our infographics as well. So uh, I think on 29th, we're going to share the post as well for the general members of IPMSA Pakistan in which we will give access to them for going through that policy. And again, you will have the access to it. You can read it. You can give us your input via an email. You can send it to nora.ifmsapakistan at the rate of gmail.com. That's my email. Um, and I will get that input directly from you and we will work on it. We will implement it. And uh, if needed, we will have your suggestion on it as well. Like, like, what is the purpose of you suggesting that particular input? So like talking to you directly, anyone who gives their input, we will work on it, like all the recommendations that we get. Thank you so much, uh, Anthal, for your uh, best wishes. Um, okay, so uh, for Ahmed Numan, how can like uh, a policy be presented on NGA? So what happens is, I'm going to repeat this a bit. Uh, the process is that the team that is working on policy, they complete the policy. Once the policy is done, the second step is to send it for input. Input from members of IFMS of Pakistan and presidents of the LCs. Because if you have attended the, uh, uh, the plenaries that happen, so you will have seen that there are motions that are presented and like the presidents have to vote on those motions, right? So for a policy, the policy will be presented on NGA as well. Now, we're not sure about when is NGA going to happen, but whenever it is like whenever the NGA is announced and like we like I as a national officer will like send it as in like a uh, submission to the EV that, OK, so here this is something that my team has worked on and I'm going to present it over there. So like just have this over submission. So once incorporating your input into it, completing it into a final shape, we will send it for submission. Now, the policy commission, what is policy commission? People who are going to present or maybe second that policy, right? 
So it includes three people on national level. Number one is going to be the national officer himself or herself, like in case of national policy and essential slip abortion, it is going to be me. As a national officer, I will be the number one person for that policy commission who's going to present it. And I think if I'm not wrong, the EB is going to give me some time um, uh, in NGA as well to present it in front of all the members of IFMC Pakistan, like we present our candidature. In the similar way, we're going to present that uh, policy in front of everyone as well, maybe in two or three minutes. Then there are two LCs that back my stance on it. Like they back my stance on policy on access to safe abortion. Who are going to be that LCs and how are we going to get them on board? For that purpose, we are going to open the calls same, like in a similar manner for the LCs to go through the policy and to tell us or let us know that this particular member or this particular LC want to back or second our policy. It can be any LC. So there, there will be an open call for that. And we will like go through all the calls and we will see that what is their stance and why do they want to support our stance. And so two LCs will be selected or shortlisted to like second that uh, policy with us and their name will go in the policy paper as a policy commission as well. So number one is going to be me and then there are going to be two people from IFMSA Pakistan from any LCs who want to back that or maybe who want to second that policy in NGA 2020 whenever it happens. I, uh, I'm hoping that I've answered your question. Just let me know if you have any further question on this. Shanal, I'm going through your question. Okay, so Shanal, I have read your question. Your question is uh, that uh, LC presidents, again, the, something I mentioned earlier, that the term is going to end in August 2020 and there's going to be a new term where there's going to be a new national team and a new national officer. Similarly, we're going to have new presidents as well, right? So um, is there going to be a proper handover? Yes, there is going to be a proper handover for people who have filled in the forms for the presidents. They might have seen it that uh, I have entered, like for the president's one, I have entered two separate portions. Number one is current president. Number two, the person, the contact person from that LC that we are going to contact in future term. By that, I meant it can be the same person, the same president, if they are going to be part of that LC in the next term, number one, or number two, it is going to be anyone who is going to be either the next president or be part of the LC anyways. So um, yes, we did make sure that we have people on board who, if not in this particular term, but in next term will be on board with us as like contact person from that LC to help us out with all the work. So there is going to be a proper handover because I'm directly in communication with all the presidents who have applied for this initiative. I hope I've answered your question. Just let me know in the chat. Okay, so can I explain to you briefly about the working of Nora and NGA? Okay, so uh, Umar, um, Nora, as national officer, my work is to make sure that SCORA is uh, like active, super active throughout my term in like IFMSA Pakistan. And this is literally what I have been trying to do for past eight months now. Uh, there have been lots and lots of initiatives uh, taken uh, by this particular national team. Quite a few mentioning just like two which are working on and talking about policy and access to safe abortion then SCORA exchanges. First time both of these initiatives have been taken. Apart from that, mentioning just a few, there was first time that we had national uh, activity on access to safe abortion, making her story. Then we had an international collaboration with IFMSA Kazakhstan on HIV and AIDS. Apart from that, we are having currently, we're in process of like, I haven't announced it, but because you're asking. Um, okay, uh, okay. So like, Currently, we are working in process, like we're in process of working on focus areas, and uh, we are trying to like uh, get out the manuals and ma tra tra training manuals on these focus areas that will be shared with the local officers of IFMSA Pakistan in Skora, so that they can implement these ideas in future. And uh, that was about my working and stuff. But if you really want to know, like the abbreviation of the complete terms. Like in your question, I'm answering both of them. For Nora, it stands for National Officer on uh, Standing Committee of Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights, including HIV and AIDS. And NGA stands for National Journal Assembly. This is an assembly, like it's a, an event 
uh, a national event that happens once in every year for IFMSA Pakistan, where all the LCs and all the members of IFMSA Pakistan come for sessions and any kind of discussion that happens there. So yeah, I hope I've answered your question in regards to the working and then the abbreviations as well. Does anyone have any other question? On the count of five, four, three, okay. Okay, so Ibrahim, your question uh, is, what does IPAL stand for? Uh, IPAL directly does not have a complete abbreviation, but IPAL is an international organization that is working on um, access to safe abortions. Um, for us, like how do we interpret IPAS to be? Um, IPAS are, like, are the external collaborators of international IFMSA. Suppose if I'm working in IT at the moment, so we are directly in contact with the IPAS team and they like fund us internationally for like conducting activities, sessions, trainings and stuff. So IPAS is a full-fledged SPORA training in like regards to, like it's not a training, I'm sorry, just correct it. It's a workshop on access to safe abortions. So yeah, that's what IPAS stands for. I myself, I'm an IPAS trainer. Myra is an IPAS trainer. We had our IPAS in Hong Kong, APRM 2019. So it's a three days workshop on access to safe abortion and maternal health, obviously. Also, Ibrahim, if you like uh, really want to know about it, I can send you the resources for this as well. I have the manuals and uh, the link to the official website. So I'll forward it to you via email. I hope that answers your question. So does anyone have any other question? Thank you so much, Vinish. Uh, I'll just mention one thing in the end. In this particular uh, term, we have tried to take like lots of initiatives something that have not been happened in the past by SCORA national team. And we have put lots and lots of efforts in this, the whole team collectively, it's not just me. Uh, yes, I am presenting the work most of the time, but none of this would have been possible if I did not have a power packed SCORA national team that are on their toes literally all the time to work with us. So um, just like taking this particular moment, I will just like, like I do appreciate them mostly in person as well, but just like in front of you all as well, I would just take this moment to like appreciate all of them who have been like doing a super, super job. So um, thank you, my national team for being super active in SCORA and like taking it to new heights in activists in Pakistan. And again, I would like to thank you all for making time for this particular webinar. This is something that we've been working on for very long and we wanted to share our ideas with you. Uh, inshallah, um, SCORA national team will have one more webinar on focus areas and um, um, telling you all about all the work that we have done. This is something that I've told you in a nutshell, but there's a lot more to tell. Uh, in next month, inshallah, the date is not yet confirmed, but we'll share it with you via our groups. So yeah, that's that from our side. And thank you so much, everyone, for making time for this. And Jazakallah, uh, happy... Uh, Ramadan and just like in this Ramadan pray for everyone around us people who are suffering with corona everywhere in the world just pray for the safety and stay at home and be safe take care guys Allah Hafiz